Hi there, and today we've got Deep T's driving test. A driving test is taking place in Red Hill in West Sussex, and it's during the COVID restrictions. So currently, the examiner is just wiping down the dashboard and wiping down the door. They're also both wearing face masks. The examiners also might choose to put a seat cover on and to wear gloves. This examiner is just wearing the face mask and wiping the surfaces down. You'll notice the car park is quite narrow. No one-way system, but just quite narrow. So the vehicle turns in, and to be at a speed, ready to slow right down and potentially stop. For example, the vehicle turned in now, stop and let them turn in. Deep T is turning left out of the car park. Be very cautious before committing to your left turn, and making sure you look left and right. As if there's a large vehicle coming from the left, it might be a bit tight, and it'll be best to wait for them to pass. We've also got a zebra crossing here. Make sure the crossing is clear and there's no one looking to cross. You must give way to pedestrians on the crossing as well as pedestrians looking to cross. As you then exit the Red Hill Test Centre, you have a stop line. Really important to the stop line, as the name suggests, you must stop, and that's a law. So all four wheels must stop turning completely. You could use the hammer if you want to, but it's not a legal requirement. Deep T is turning left here. Let's see if she fully stops. Yep, that was a full stop. Deep T's checked it safe to the junction, and off we go, turning left. Now on this road, the speed limit is 40 miles per hour. There's no sign to tow this at the moment, you just need to know that when you come out of the test centre. But you might have just seen the repeater sign just on the right there, so it is quite well marked with repeater signs. Now because it is a 40 mile per hour road, we do want to be making some progress and getting towards 40 miles per hour when it's safe to. We don't want to be driving ever at 20 miles an hour. I appreciate the road's quite narrow, but this standard, you should be able to drive comfortably on a road of this width. The main thing that's going to affect your speed is the bends. So when the road straightens out like this, you're building your speed and then slowing down for the bends. And then when it straightens out, you're building your speed to make some progress. And on this driving test, Deep T didn't get any driver faults for her speed on this road. So if you watch her speed, that's basically been accepted by the examiner. Remember, 40 is a speed limit not a speed target, but really important to remember as well, if you can make some more progress, you need to make progress and build your speed, but it's quite difficult to on this road. A little bit of information about Deep T, this is actually her seventh driving test. Her previous six driving tests have all been at Crawley in West Sussex, and they've basically been with a different driving instructor. So this is basically her first test with me. Um, and on her previous tests, she's basically had serious faults for various different things. So that did mean this driving test, Depsy was particularly anxious as she's feeling like she's going to get unlucky again and have some random serious fault occur. Speed limit changing to 30 miles per hour and Deep T's turning right. Now at this T-junction, DT does seem to be a bit hesitant. She seems to wait for quite a while with no vehicles coming. So you'll see this vehicle on the left appears. Obviously she wouldn't be able to see that initially. Then this van appears. I can only assume she's given way to the van, but it does seem like she had plenty of time to go. So she's given the driver fault here for undue hesitation. To get Deep T to calm down to relax, on lessons I've really been getting her to think positively. So after the lesson and during the lesson, I've been getting to really tell me about what went well on the lesson. What went well about that parallel park, for example. And if something didn't go too well, then take it as a positive to learn from it in a nice positive way.
The examiner now asks Deepti to pull up on the left in a safe place. Deepti checks her middle and left mirror, waits till she passes the junction, then signals left and slows down nice and gently and stops just next to the curb before the driveway. You'll notice she stopped on a solid white line, but this is perfectly fine. The solid white line is just an edge line. It's not illegal, it's perfectly fine to park there, no fault given here. The examiner now asks Deep T to drive on when it's safe to. Having checked her mirrors and blind spot, she's off. And as well, to help Deep T stay calm, what she's also done is not told anyone about the driving test today. As often telling people can put more pressure on yourself, so it's not really a good idea. And the other thing we also did, just before coming to the test centre, we went and parked up near a duck pond and just had a little bit of a walk around the duck pond. Even though it was raining, we had our umbrellas with us, just to try and relax and just to calm down and take in the nice scenery and watch the ducks. At the roundabout, turn left, the first exit, asks the examiner. Deep she checks our middle mirror, a left mirror, and signals left, and then starts to slow so she can scan the roundabout to see if it's safe to go. There is that white car coming, but perhaps after that white car. Changes gears, it's safe to go, and off she goes. Roundabout nicely executed. Got the crossing here. Doesn't appear to be anyone looking to cross, so that's quite fine. Lights quite unlikely to change. At the traffic lights, we're going to be turning left. If you're going to signal here, wait till you pass this junction on the left and now signal. But a signal isn't essential here, as it doesn't really benefit anyone. Just a quick glance to the right before you commit out the traffic light and off we go. Road here, plenty of room for two cars, so deep to proceed through with a bit of caution as it is still fairly narrow. Take the next road on the right. Middle mirror, right mirror, right signal. Brakes to slow and gently steering into the turning box. Clutch down and into gear one. The yellow van can let us go? Yes they are, so in we go. Anyone to give way to here? No, it looks good, so off we go. Well done Deep T. Good idea to reduce speed here and go through with caution as the driving school car has their lights on and so does the van so they could move off or open their doors at any moment. You also might see the road ahead is blocked by the truck trying to turn round. The examiner sees this and asks Deep T to pull up on the left, don't worry if you're blocking the driveways. Deep T then secures the car handbrake and neutral and they just had to wait it out and this is where the examiner is quite nice and deep T really complimented the examiner because on situations like this the examiner just started to talk to deep T just to relax her but they can't go anywhere the road's blocked and they just basically had to wait it out so a little chat here just about how she's coping with the covid restrictions how her work's going when she started driving lessons and just a general chit chat really. And it really helped to calm Deep T down. Just to show her that examiners are humans. And what I did forget to mention, at the beginning of this driving test, Deep T was asked her tell me question. She was asked by the examiner 
tell me how you would make sure the head restraint is correctly adjusted to ensure it offers maximum protection in the event of a collision. And Deep Sea answers this question correctly by saying to the examiner, the middle of the head restraint should be level with approximately my eyes or the top of my ear. And could you now please drive on when it's safe to? So middle mirror, right mirror, right blind spot, signal if necessary, and off we go. Obviously from the video footage, it's quite hard to tell if Deep T is signalling or not, but when moving away and pulling over to the side of the road, you signal if necessary. So you don't have to signal, there's no one around. Um, but if you want to, that's fine. There's no harm in that, you won't get marked down for that. If there is someone around, you must signal so they know you're going to pull away. The examiner asks Deep T to pull up on the left once more. And this time it's going to be stopping just before a parked vehicle, about a car length before it roughly. And this is what they call the angled start. It's simpler than it seems. It basically just means pulling away from before a parked vehicle to make sure you control the vehicle when you've got a little bit of less space in front of you. And off Deep T goes. Good control of the vehicle, mirrors checked and blind spot checked, one happy examiner and one safe driver. At the end of the road, turn right please. Middle mirror, right mirror, right signal. Gently on the brakes, want a nice smooth stop, clutch down and into gear one to allow the traffic in front to proceed out of the junction before we can proceed. Really good positioning here from Deep T to firstly keep back from the van so you're not too close just in case they need to reverse or you need to move around them and also to keep near the centre line when turning right. This will allow vehicles to be next to you and turn left. Good decision to wait for these cars coming as it just doesn't look like it will be enough time to pull out in front of that one nor to pull out in front of that one. But now we've got our safe gap so off we go. Checking the middle and right mirror and starting to build speed. And the speed limit on this road is 40 miles per hour. The tricky thing is, there's been no signs to tell Deep T it's a 40 mile per hour road, as this road's just not very well signposted. So at the moment, she's doing the correct thing by sticking to 30 until she sees a road sign. We should hopefully soon see a repeater sign to confirm to us it's a 40 mile per hour road. Let's see if we can find one. Ah, there's a repeater sign, 40 miles per hour. Deep T spotted it, as now she's starting to increase our speed beyond 30 miles per hour. And into gear 4. Now the speedometer here on the dash cam is saying she's doing 34 miles an hour, which seems a little bit slow. But that could potentially be the speedometer on the dash cam isn't quite right. What we need to look at is the speedometer on the car and obviously on this footage we can't see that so we're just going to have to assume that Deep T is basically about 40 miles an hour as on this road you would need to get to 40 miles per hour there's no reason to be going below the speed limit here. Either way the examiner gives no driver faults for her speed here. And coming up soon we've got a speed limit change. Can you see it coming up? Deep T does as she checks her middle mirror and then starts to brake gently to ensure she's at 30 miles an hour before she passes the sign. And then changing down to gear 3. It's worth noting Deep T has been following the sat nav from the start of the test and is still continuing to follow the sat nav at the moment. At the roundabout, turn right. Second exit, middle mirror, right mirror, right signal. Brakes to slow, so we can assess the roundabout. Clutch down into gear one, we need to give way to the traffic, and it's safe to go, off we go. As we come round the roundabout, middle mirror, left mirror, left signal to exit the roundabout, and into gear two, and off we go. The pedestrian crossing is clear, no one's going to press the button and make the lights change. 
speed limit is now changing to 40 miles per hour. Wait till you pass the sign, then check your mirrors and start to increase your speed if safe to. The speed in the dash cam again looks a little bit slow, saying 30 miles per hour, where here, possibly within 35 miles an hour around this bend. But as mentioned before, the speed on the dash camera might not be too accurate, and Deep T didn't get any driver faults for this. So we're going to assume that the speed in the speedometer was fine. On this bit of road, a reasonable speed would be 40 miles per hour, the speed limit. As we can see ahead really far, the road's quite wide, and there's no hazards, nothing that's going to cause us to have to slow down or stop suddenly. The sat-nav now asks Deep T to take the next road on the left. So mirrors checked, signal on, speed being reduced, changing down to gear 2 for this turn, and in we go. New speed limit on the new road is 30 miles per hour. And could you pull up on the left in a safe place please, asked the examiner. Mirrors, signal if necessary, and pulling over in a safe place next to the curb. Handbrake on, into neutral, and waiting for further instructions from the examiner. Please drive on when it's safe to. Check those mirrors, check that blind spot, signal if it's necessary to, and then drive on when safe. And we've got a parked vehicle on our side of the road here, so we have to give way to oncoming traffic. So middle mirror, right mirror, check ahead for any oncoming traffic, it's clear, no need to signal, just steer around. Aiming to keep about a car door length from the parked vehicles. We are slightly close to the parked vehicles there, and the deep you did correcting come out a bit wider. Really important to keep a car door length from the parked vehicles, where possible, just in case they open their door. If you're a car door length away from the parked vehicles and they open their door, you won't hit their door, so you'll keep safe. If, of course, it's not possible to keep a car door length away, like here, when the road narrows, then you reduce your speed. So general rule of thumb, a car door length is about three foot, or 90 centimeters to a meter. So if you can keep three foot from a parked vehicle, you can do 30 miles per hour if it's safe to. If you're going to keep two foot from a parked vehicle, then you should do a maximum of 20 miles per hour. If you can only keep one foot from a parked vehicle, then a maximum of 10 miles per hour. And if you can't keep one foot from a parked vehicle, then generally it means you shouldn't be going through in the first place and you should stop and give way to the oncoming traffic. And taking the next road on the right, middle mirror, right mirror, right signal, brakes to slow, really killing that speed because it's downhill here. Just keep using that brake, don't press the clutch yet. Now clutch down, gear two, and in we go. Being careful not to press the clutch too early, because if you go clutch too early on steep downhill, the car will increase in speed, and it'd be very difficult to do the turn safely. It's what we call coasting, or what sometimes people refer to as riding the clutch. At the end of the road, turning left, middle mirror, left mirror, left signal, brakes to slow, really kill that speed, getting quite a steep downhill, clutch down now, and into gear one, so we can't see what's happening at the junction, it's what we call a closed junction. Is it safe to go? Yes it is. And taking the next road on the right, mirrors checked, signal on, this turn looks quite a wide turn, and it looks clear ahead. This turn should be possible to do in gear 2 with the clutch fully up. Slightly hesitant from deep to turn in there. A fault is recorded for progress, undue hesitation. 
as it's just a really nice wide turn. Deep, you can see ahead really clearly, there's nothing coming. She didn't need to slow that much. She could just turned in with a little bit more speed, a little bit more confidence. Could you now pull up on the right, on the opposite side of the road, in a safe place, please? Middle mirror, right mirror, make sure you signal right, because you are changing the side of the road you're driving on. Make sure as well you give way to any oncoming traffic before you pull over onto the opposite side of the road. But for deep T, it's all clear, so she could pull over immediately, and she pulled over in a nice safe spot. So she's now secured the car, and the examiner is asking deep T to reverse back for two to three car lengths, keeping reasonably close to the curb. Deep T selects reverse gear, checks her right blind spot, her right mirror, her middle mirror, the road ahead, her left mirror, and then looking over a left blind spot directly after the rear window, making sure it's safe to start reversing. And just every so often, you can always pause like Deep T's doing here, just to check you're okay from the curb, and just to make sure it's safe. Great decision to stop for this oncoming vehicle. It's just really confused that oncoming vehicle. You continue to reverse when they went past you, and it could be dangerous. So you want to be stopping when there's vehicles passing you, especially when they're on the side of the road that you're driving on. So basically, the oncoming vehicles. The examiner's happy with Deep T's car control skills and her observation skills. So she asks Deep T to drive on when she's ready to. Mirrors, signal, remember left blind spot this time as we're parked up on the opposite side of the road. And off we go. A good manoeuvre there from Deep T. No faults recorded. Well done, Deep T. Some parked vehicles on our side of the road here. Is there room for two vehicles to fit through? Yeah, I think there would be if you slowed your speed. At the end of the road, turning right. Once you've turned right, immediately turn right once again. The two junctions are very close. Some really good position here from Deep T, keeping near the centre line to allow other drivers behind to position to the left of her if they want to turn left. Now it does initially look like Deep T's been a bit hesitant here, as it takes quite a while for this vehicle on the left to pass her, so she possibly could have pulled out. But I think the reason she didn't is because she's pulling out from the, and turning right and then turning right immediately again, you'll need quite a big gap. So no fault was given by the driving examiner. When it's safe to, can you show me how you would demiss the front windscreen? Asks the examiner. Deep T presses the button to demiss the front windscreen and then turns it off. We've got a warning sign here for yellow background on, so they're really trying to make it stand out. There's a junction on our right, a hidden junction. So just be aware in case someone pulls out without seeing you. Two sets of traffic lights coming up, both very close to each other, turning right at the first set of traffic lights, and then turning left. So good choice to pick the right lane here, and then good distance from the vehicle in front, giving enough room to move around them in case they break down, or enough time to respond if the vehicle in front rolls, or maybe they make a mistake and stall as they're trying to pull away. By having this distance, you'll have time to respond to that and avoid hitting them. And even though the traffic light's on green, you still want to be checking left and right, just in case an emergency vehicle is coming, because they won't stop at the red lights. 
and then remember we're turning left here so mirrors and signal left as this lane could also go straight so that signal is essential did you notice the speed limit change there? Deepty did if you didn't rewind the video and see if you can spot it the speed limit is now 20 miles per hour if you did miss the speed limit sign your driving test you have got speed bumps on this road so that could be an indication of a 20 mile an hour road Another stop sign here, Deep T is being asked to turn left. Let's see if she comes to a full stop, as remember it's a legal requirement to fully stop. Yep, yeah, that was a full stop, all four wheels stopped turning completely. Well done Deep T. Now this is a crossroads, so make sure you're checking left, right and ahead, as there could be traffic coming from ahead of you. Deep T is doing really well to remember the speed limit is still 20 miles per hour. Good work. Could you pull up on the left in a safe place? Wait till you pass that junction and now signal, making sure you've also checked your mirrors. Good spot chosen by Deepty here to make sure she's not blocking any driveways. Handbrake on, neutral and the car secured. Please drive on when it's safe to. It's a little bit busy on this bit of road, so be patient like Deepty's been here. Check those mirrors, check the road ahead and wait for it to be safe to go. There's the one Deep Two was waiting for. And now there's some oncoming vehicles she needs to wait for. So just be patient and wait for the safe opportunity to pull away. What about after this fan? Is it going to be safe? No, another one behind there. Now it's safe to go. Final check for that blind spot, signal on, and off we go. Road looks a bit narrow up here with the park vehicles on the right, and we've got quite a large vehicle coming towards us. So Deep T does well to stop for this and let the van come through. And then once the silver ones come through, off we go. The road narrows again here, this time the sign's telling us to give way to oncoming traffic, but it's clear, so Deep T proceeds through. Remember as well, the speed limit's still 20. Deep T's remembered this as she's still sticking to a maximum of 20 miles per hour. Can you see the end of the road coming up? We've been asked to turn right here. Mirrors, signal right, slowing down, clutch down and into gear one. Slightly hesitant there, as Deep T didn't need to fully stop. That seems to be though related to her approach speed. Perhaps because Deep T is trying to get over the speed bump, her approach speed was slightly too fast, meaning she had to stop to take control back of the car. So therefore, a driver fault was given for Junction's approach speed. And now we can see the speed limit changing back to 30 miles per hour. So 
some parked vehicles on our left side here, and some oncoming vehicles. Is going to be room to fit through? Yeah, plenty of room. Well done, DT. At the end of the road, turning right. And a bit of a hill start here, so let's see how Deep Team copes with this. Firstly, got to be aware of this vehicle with the blue lights on. A bit unusual, an undercover police vehicle there. Is it safe to go? Yes, it is. Good hill start, Deep Team. Now DT does really well here to keep within the 30 mile an hour speed limit, as it does feel like the road could be a faster road, but it's not, as there's been so no signs to tell us the speed limit has changed. And also, on a road like this, if it was 40 miles an hour, you would expect to see regular repeater signs saying 40 miles per hour. So basically, if it doesn't say it's 40 on a road like this, in a sort of semi-built up area, then it's not 40. Now the speed limit's changing to 40 miles per hour. So Deep T checks our mirrors and starts to increase her speed. And if you look on the left here, you'll see a 40 mile an hour repeater sign. So that just confirms what I was speaking about a few moments ago. Speed limit changed into 30 miles per hour. Deep Sea spots it early checks her mirrors and makes sure she's at 30 before she passes the sign. Well done. Take the next road on the right towards Red Hill Aerodrome. Mirrors, signal right, moving into the turning box. Is it safe to go? Yes it is. Take the next road on the right, it comes up quite soon. Mirrors, signal right, start braking, she can find this turn, where is it? Ah, oh, there it is, is it safe to go? Yes it is, nice and confidently done Deep T, well done. Did you spot the speed limit sign? Deep T did, the speed limit is now 40 miles per hour. Again, if you didn't spot it, rewind the video. Most speed limit signs are after you turn into a road. So it was a 40 mile an hour sign just after Deep T did that right turn.
Really good speed choice here from Deep T. Building the speed on this nice straight bit of road, even though the dash camera speedometer doesn't seem to be accurate. I think the genuine speed is probably 35, 36 miles per hour. Deep she does well then to ease off gas here as her vision reduces round the bend. And then does really well to really start killing her speed. But it's really quite sharp left bend coming up here. Particularly because it's a bit of a downhill. So you really need to be on the brakes here to control the speed so the car doesn't run away from you. Again, great speed choice here, building that speed towards 40 miles per hour when the road opens up and it's safe to. Then reducing the speed slightly for the oncoming vehicle so the road's reasonably narrow, and then picking that speed back up as the road opens up. See the warning sign here? There's a low bridge coming up. So it could mean large vehicles will be in the middle of the road. So Deep Sea does well to slow into the situation, being ready to give way if needed. And then, can you see the speed limit change? It's now 30 miles per hour. Now we're almost back at the test centre, and Deep Sea does well to stay calm and keep concentrating. At the end of the road, turning right, then turning immediately left. So good speed choice here to really kill the speed, as it's very hard to see what's happening at this junction. Just got to give way to a few cars here waiting for a safe opportunity to go, and there it is. And it's just so important to keep your concentration, speed might change to 40 there, but like I say, really important to keep your concentration until you get back to the test centre, and you've parked up and switched the engine off. Many people fail their test in the last few minutes as they lose their concentration as they know they've almost finished the test. Basically, don't switch off until you've switched off. So what I mean by that is don't start relaxing and don't start losing your concentration until you've switched that engine off. So don't switch off until you've switched off. Take the next road on the left, it comes up very soon after this corner. Mirrors, signal left, killing that speed, giving yourself time to find where the junction is, and then changing down that gear into gear one be best for this turn, as it's quite hard to see around the corner. Still keep that concentration, as you're in quite a busy car park. We've got a zebra crossing coming up. So, if any pedestrians are looking to cross, we must give way to them. Are there any looking to cross? Looks good to the left, looks good to the right, and we're safe to go. And then, taking the next road on the right into the car park. Again, keep your concentration, take it really nice and slow here, as the car park's very narrow. Really good speed there, Deep T, well done. The other drive school car here, the white one, is giving way to us, so that's great. And then the examiner is now going to ask Deep T to drive forwards into a parking space just next to the other driving school car. And there I am with my umbrella, just waiting for Deep T to return with my fold up chair just to sit on, as at the moment, in the current conditions, driving instructors are not allowed to sit in the back of the driving test, nor are they allowed into the driving test waiting room, they need to wait outside. Just unfortunately today, it was raining. He's now secured the car, 
and waiting for the result from the examiner. Deepti starts cheering. Well done, she's passed her driving test with only four driver faults. A really great result, considering Deepti's only driven this area a handful of times, and also that this is her seventh test, and finally as well, it's in the rain, and she's not had too much experience of driving in the rain. Ah!